Hi, this is just a quick follow-up to my main channel video on the common mode rejection ratio and how to use an oscilloscope to actually uh, measure that and also get a uh, use the frequency response analyzer to get a uh, response plot of that of common of CMR uh, versus uh, frequency. And someone mentioned on that uh, video, um, can I do that with the uh, Bode 100 that I've got, the uh, VNA, the Vector Network uh, Analyzer and Impedance Response Analyzer and Yes, I can. Um, so let's try it. It's not going to be as good as what we got on the uh, oscilloscope due to, the, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, by the way, that was like a, a pretty terrible performing video. Actually, I'm quite disappointed with the uh, views in that. It's probably my worst video, uh, worst performing video in a long time. The feedback is great. Everyone seems to love it, but nobody seems interested. I don't know, do I get the title wrong? Do I get the thumbnail wrong? I did actually uh, put a poll on Twitter of which thumbnail um, to use, and I used the one that everyone uh, voted, you know, the vast majority uh, voted for. So I don't think it's the thumbnail, it's probably just like the subject title. Who wants to, I don't know, if you've got a suggestion for a better title, I can try and uh, change it, but nobody seemed interested in it. Anyway, it's one of those good long uh, term videos, because I don't think there's few, if any, um, videos like that on. YouTube. That's why they're like, you know, I thought it was good. Anyway, um, let's use my uh, Bode 100. None of that Bode rubbish. The Bode 100 uh, frequency response analyzer, which you've um, seen in uh, previous videos. Oops, I'll just turn off my uh, overlay there. And uh, this is not the response. I haven't uh, turned it on. Let me show you the uh, setup here. Sorry, I don't have my second camera set up. But there's the Bode uh, 100. Got our output here. Got channel one input here, and uh, channel two um, input is coming from the output of the uh, HVP100. I'll turn that on, switch it, we'll measure it at uh, times um, uh, one to 10 uh, division ratio. Can't really do one to 100, I don't think. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, anyway, and then just like last time, I've got a 50 ohm load. There's an internal 50 ohm load, but I've disconnected that. So just an external uh, 50 ohm load on there and um, as before just uh, twisted leads on the input and both connected um, shorted together to the uh, output there across the uh, 50 ohm load so we can now plug that in and see what we get uh, uh, uh. too close now um, I downloaded the uh, latest version of the software here now we're getting uh, well we could have gone back we can go, can we just go to new measurement? Oh, I could goof that up. Yeah, here we go. So these are the different types of uh, measurement that can do. We don't want our transmission reflection. What we want is our gain phase. So this is part of the VNA or vector network analyzer capability um, of this thing. And you can see that the output here, um, and then we, what we want is effectively the transfer function of our device under test, which was the HVP70. Uh, so we've got that going off into channel one there. Then uh, yeah, the output of our uh, device is that um, uh, there. So anyway, and we can do uh, impedance analysis as well. I've shown shown this in uh, previous videos. This is all the stuff that can do. It's very cool. I should play with this more actually. Um, yeah, we can get uh, responses of surface. I've got you know, little surface mount jigs with it and everything so that we can, you know, anyway, it can do lots of cool stuff. So let's just go back to recent. Uh, uh. Can we just go backwards? There we go. Good. Okay. Now, what we want is our highest possible source voltage. Now, here is the problem here. Our source level, 13 dBm, uh, that's only 1 volt RMS into a 50 ohm load. Unfortunately, you know, we were using 5 volts in the previous video, so that's why it's not going to be as good here, because we, uh, yeah, this all has to do, because we're measuring very low signal levels, and I think that the, uh, well, down here, we can, the receiver number two, uh, we don't have any amplifiers on there. All we've got is an attenuator. And I think the lowest range is seven millivolts full scale, I think, don't quote me on that. Um, but anyway, so we want no attenuator on the uh, input that we're trying to measure the common mode noise output of the uh, probe, so channel two, basically. I uh, don't know why they don't call it receiver to channel two. Um, and then we do actually, I've uh, tweaked this, and we'll tell you if it overloads. So I've tweaked this, uh, 20 dB seems to be uh, the right level there for our receiver 
number wire for our input across our 50 ohm load there. Uh, it does work on lower ones, you just won't get as big a signal to noise ratio there. Uh, receive a bandwidth, this is just how long it's, uh, you know, the bandwidth at each sample point. Um, it, uh, 10 hertz is okay. Um, and we're going to go from 100 hertz right up to 40 megahertz here. And so what else have we got? We've got 201 uh, points here. We're going to do a logarithmic um, sweep here and uh, transmission gain set up. This is really cool. It, uh, it shows you the internal configuration here. So we've got our source mode um, and there we go. And we can set up these things here as well. It's a really nice user, user interface. It's, <laughs> they've really polished this. It's very nice. Anyway, so there's our output. Um, as I said, it does have a 50 ohm internal load. I've just I, don't know. I just had the external one there already. Um, the probe is one to one. Um, now here's the uh, cool thing: we can actually set up the probe uh, ten to one on the uh, second channel, so it'll cater for the gain of that thing. So uh, for the HVP70, so we don't have to add on uh, 20 dB on there. And we're going to get our transfer function of our device under test. No 50 ohm loading on that. They're both AC coupled. Um, and the attenuator settings you saw before: receiver, dust settle in time. We don't need to, uh, I don't think we have to add, do that at all. So we will close that down and let's run a single sweep, shall we? And let's see what we get. Now, of course, down at the uh, low end, you can see on the uh, uh, Y axis on the left hand side here, that's our magnitude in dB and we're down in the noise there. So that's why we're getting like, you know, it's, it'll come smoother in a sec. It'll now start being really smooth because we're now out of the signal to, uh, now we've got decent signal to noise ratio and it's pretty schmick so we're getting garbage on our uh, phase and the blue one is the phase so the red one is the magnitude there so it's ramping up now a spec at one meg is 50 db and i think we we're getting 51 in the previous video but we don't seem to be getting that here one one meg you can see the cursor up the top there 47 and a half so not quite, but uh, 20 meg, where we were measuring before, getting a little bump in there, up at 20 meg, uh, 43 dB, and the spec is uh, 40, or so I think 40, uh, so 44, I think that's pretty close to where we we're measuring with the scope. Um, so yeah, and you can see that the uh, phase, um, I used the incorrect phase, somebody pointed this out, and yeah, uh, totally correct, thanks for actually uh, pulling me up on using just sloppy terminology, I said a phase reversal like this, it's not a reversal, it's a phase essential ra essentially wrap around, like the phase is actually continuing, the cool thing about the, uh, the Bode 100 is that, uh, yeah, here we go, it's got the op option here to unwrap phase, okay, so we can unwrap that and boom, it's just basically the phase is just, it, it just keeps going. It doesn't suddenly, you know, <laughs> suddenly change phase that drastically. It doesn't suddenly flip 180 degrees instantly. Um, no, it's just continuing to essentially, you know, drift in phase in that in that direction but you know i mean a lot of the time you can't actually display that or you don't want to display that on a um or a scope or a vna or whatever so you uh so you do a wrap so you wrap it and you understand that when it goes vertical like that instantly you've wrapped from one side to the other just so that you can keep a better scale on your um screen so anyway you can wrap or unwrap uh that there you go um that's it that's that, That's all we can do. That's the absolute best we can do <laughs> there, unfortunately. Um, because, yeah, we don't have a high enough voltage level. They do sell a times four amplifier for this thing, which, which isn't much. Times four isn't a lot. <laughs> it only takes us up to four times, uh, four volts RMS, which is, you know. So, yeah, I'd need a decent, at least a times 10 amp in there. Like a times 20 would be really nice. Um, and then we could uh, really do that. But I don't have like a 50 meg bandwidth, um, you know, I could... <laughs> Maybe I could cobble something together, perhaps, or something like that, but not for this video. So, there you go. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's, um, it, it is under spec at that one meg and down at 20 kilohertz. What was that spec at 20 kilohertz again? It was, let me read the data sheet, uh, minus 60. And we're getting up the top there, minus 50. <laughs> so, it, it doesn't meet the spec by 10 dB. And, but once again, that could be the fact that uh, we're, you know, um, don't have the signal level required for that. Um, so, yeah. 
Anyway, so what I'm going, now going to do is use this same setup, and I'm going to measure the same. Th well, look, we can we can try the times 100. Let's let's do it again for the times 100 transmission gain, but it's going to be, of course, an order of magnitude worse. So we can now do that again, and it won't be smooth for a long time. So, uh, well, it's just it's just flat, flat flat because <laughs> it's just like the it's higher noise floor now so we've got a higher noise floor on the actual uh, probe itself and oh it's oh it's starting to do okay isn't it actually i'm rather surprised by that there you, there you go there you go that is it's, it's almost identical plot almost identical on uh divide by 100 which shows that what dominates here is the, uh, oh, hey, no, no, there you go, it's falling off. It's falling, whoa, look at that response, look at that, look at that, isn't that interesting? There you go, wow, wow, <laughs> fascinating. So, yeah, that response here, I was going to say, um, that's more to do with the amp, with the, uh, differential amplifier itself than mismatches in the uh, input divider but you know once you start getting up in frequency those input divider resistors they're hard to um, hard to compensate for and that's why you get you know sort of like lousy response like you know it's sort of like um, response that's all over the shop like that but th 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 there you go that's interesting huh so at a, at a couple of megs it starts to fall off and become uh, not as good as the divide by 10. Fascinating, huh? And if we, uh, by the way, you know, if like, like we set the receiver bandwidth to like a kilohertz or something, we could do that much quicker. So, boom, look. <laughs> but you can see it's not as, it isn't as smooth there. And if you set it down at one, if you're really keen, you set it down at one hertz, but you're not going to get any advantage to that. So even 300 hertz will give you a little bit better response. And then... 100, boom, boom, baby, boom, gets better each time, there you go, fascinating, huh, I'm now going to get the Mixig uh, probe, the DP1007, is it, and try that, so here it is, the DP1007, and uh, for that, it's got a, <laughs> I took the sticker off the back, because I've done a teardown uh, video of this, um, there's some adjustment uh, pots, for those who don't know, um, Mixig actually uh, specifically developed this uh, product for me. Um, they they didn't have this, and I said, "Hey, can you make an equivalent unit to my uh, to match the specs like times ten and times one hundred to match uh, basically my HVP seventy uh, probe at a lower uh, cost?" And they went, um, "We'll have a go at it," and uh, and they did. They actually developed this, but now it's on for sale anywhere. Um, and I had some issues with the common mode. Um, on this and they never got back to me on it. So I'm going to remeasure this now. I can't remember the exact uh, details, but anyway, yeah, so this is, um, so they did match practically specs for spec. If you look at the two data sheets side by side, they're almost identical. So Mixig just copied the HV Sapphire HVP70 uh, specs because I told them to. And so the reason you can get this is because of me. There you go. Anyway, let me hook it up. All right, here we go. Got it connected times 10. Single shot. Oh, well, let's, uh, well, let's fix that up. Let's go down to 30 hertz, shall we? And, whoa, look at that peaky peak. Wow, something's, something's happening there. And maybe that's a mismatch in the input uh, divider. Oh, sorry, I was completely wrong before. It's not 20 megahertz, it's 10 megahertz on the HVP70. <laughs> Why'd I think 20? Um, anyway, so yeah, yeah, oops, I completely goofed that. Uh, yeah, so it's the same spec, minus 40. Yeah, and minus 60 at 20 kilohertz. So minus 40 at 10. So minus 40 at 10. And yeah, they're getting minus 33. Minus 33.6. So yeah. And at one meg, uh, one meg is 52. So it does meet the uh, one meg spec. 
and at 20 kilohertz minus 60. So yeah, it does it does actually meet that, but it's got this yeah, it's got this big response in there, and yeah, uh, something's happening. Oh sorry, I didn't ah. Uh, so we'll change that to 100. We'll repeat that. Oops, there we go, minus 60. Boom. And up she goes, up she goes. Yeah, see how it gets, see how it gets jaggy there? Once you're down, you know, below the noise floor there. So you start getting into the noise. But yeah, um, at, at 10 meg, it's, yeah, minus 20.8. So, yep. So there you go. That's the, that's the uh, Mixig compared to the uh, HVP70. Uh, HVP70 is um, smooth, you know, doesn't have this big issue down here. So, yeah, is that an imbalance in the uh, divider front end on the Mixig? What's going on there? Is there something, or the diff amp in there? And all the diff amp. Um, the response of the diff amp, but yeah, that's uh, but yeah, you can notice that uh, yeah, the phase just goes whoop, and then once again we've got a wrap like that, and then it goes way and back up. It's like <laughs> it's like a roller coaster. So yep, it's all over the shop. Um, yeah, not not quite as good a response as the HVP seventy, but the Sapphire do make some of the best probes in the business. So. Yeah, Mixig just haven't nailed that in, but it is much cheaper. So, you know, eh, meh. But there you go. Hope you found that interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.